Hey everybody, we're going to be trying the commentary thing out today. I have a whole bunch of videos stockpiled, so we're going to add voiceovers and see how it goes. Start with this one. So for this particular baby, it was really fun to do, although a bit of a pain to lay out, because it was a mishmash of quite a few different animal types and pieces from the parents. Here you can see the head is horse, and there's some deer antlers and deer hooves. Later on you'll get to see there's wings and bone armor, and a bit of a lion's tail or unicorn tail, depending on who you're asking. So that sort of dictated the, uh, the pose for this one, which is a little more forward-facing than what I usually do. I usually tend to do more profile poses because that shows off the anatomy and the markings better. But this particular pet, they wanted the wings out and swooping down, sort of as if taking off. So I tried to accommodate that in, with this particular pose, and it sort of came out a little floaty. I like floaty poses, particularly with wings. And here you can see the deer hooves which, interestingly enough, seem to be actually more pointy than horses' hooves, i found. So the, the front of them curves forward more, rather than horse hooves, where they sort of just go down. Uh, often during this stage, I'll sort of correct anatomy, and as you see there, and make sure any little pieces fit together with all the rest of the body and all the different edits, because after the line art's done, you really don't want to go back and touch as much of it, because that'll just mess everything else up. So, here you can see I'm trying to figure out where to place the antlers on the forehead so that they make sense, and trying to even them out symmetrically in terms of perspective, which I eh, kind of used to draw these, but they were mostly freehand. Um, it works out pretty well on this one. Uh, sometimes I, I use more reference lines and guides for drawing out anatomy when I'm not drawing something I've drawn before in particular. But antlers, are you can usually get away with looking at some pictures and kind of winging it, if you know what you're doing. Kind of. I may know what I'm doing. So here you can be, see the big swoopy tail. Uh, I actually really enjoy drawing lots of fancy swoopy hair. Because it's, it's really fun to just draw all the strands out and make them, make them pretty. And then shading hair is, is also quite fun. Just a, a thin brush and go sort of in the same direction. Uh, here for the mane, I actually redid quite a few of the original shapes, just because I wasn't liking how the profile was turning out, how the overall look of it was. So I redid, added a few more large curls, you can see there, made it sort of a big swoopy thing. And uh, I think the overall silhouette of it turned out much better. So here you can see the wings. I'm planning out the anatomy of where the different stages of feathers go. I can't remember all the names of them, but there are, you know, sort of the wingtip feathers, the bigger ones. And then there are several stages of gradually smaller feathers. I usually don't end up drawing all the smallest ones and leave that more towards shading. Uh, but the, the bigger ones I try to draw out just because it's, it looks better than just drawing a solid mass for the, the large, I think it's pin feathers at the end of the wings? I can't remember. But yeah, so here you can kind of see I'm, I'm drawing out all the little shapes, and then I'll go in and correct the line art and make it, clean it up, make it all pretty. 
so that it's uh, it's more solid for the final line art. But wings tend to take me a long time in particular, just because of all the different lines and feathers and stuff. So while I, I enjoy doing wings, they are kind of a pain in the butt to do and to shade. But, you know, it's worth it. Of course, I also don't do individual feather shading, like all the little nooks and crannies in the feathers until, it, unless I have like individual feathers, usually as a decoration and hair or beads or something. Uh, so, you know, I, I save time on shading when just doing the flat shading with feathers here, but they, they still take, they're still one of the largest or longest edits that happen relatively frequently. Because everybody loves wings on their pets, so you know, you've always got to do the big fancy open wings. Although I have done some that are more folded, which are a little more gentle than, than the open spread wings, which are sort of more powerful or just fancy looking. But yeah, wings take a long time, as you can see in comparison to the length of time I took lining the rest of the edits. So for this particular site, you can see I like to have all of the different edits and pieces of the pet separated because uh, part of the site is that you can breed different pets together and take edits from one parent or the other, mash them together. And it really helps if you have a separated PSD at that point in order to take all of the edits off of. So I like to be nice to future artists and try and add as much uh, easy separability, easy separate pieces as possible. So here's the bone armor. I really probably should have pulled up more bone references at this point, because I hadn't looked at any uh, recently enough to, to make it quite anatomically correct. Although this was more decorative, so I kind of winged it on this one too. Oftentimes, because of the layering of edits, I'll have to add in bangs and stuff on a separate layer than the main shading, or the main, main, uh, main hair. So, that's always fun. And then flowers! Because these pets tend to be displayed at either 400 or 200 pixels, they, at, the details are a little harder to see at that size. So things like flowers and greenery, I tend not to go into a lot of detail on them, on these particular pets, just because even if I go into detail, they'll turn into tiny little pixel things by the end. 
but uh, this is also where when I do sort of blobs for placement on the sketch stage, I refine them and, as you can see there, try and figure out what the final detail should look like. Often it'll help a lot if I zoom out like that so that I can see the overall look of the piece and how everything fits together. And um, so here you can see I've sharded the shading. I usually start with the shine to sort of place where my light's coming from, and that'll tell me where my shadows are. For these particular pets, I tend to do sort of a reverse shading. I start with a shading layer all filled in and then erase where highlights are, because I find that a lot easier for some reason. I think probably just because I've been doing that way for so long. But that gives me the light source and the areas where the shadows are, and I, then I go back in after the first layer and add in any deeper shadows on a, a separate layer that's just that's blank to begin with. Um, and then add in highlights on a third layer. Anything that's super shiny, like eyes, jewelry, metal, stuff like that, I'll usually add a shine layer with the white highlights. Unfortunately here I kind of lost some of the footage of the shading and the start of the coloring, but you can see all the shading finished and how I started the coloring. For this particular one there were three parents, you can see them on screen now, and uh, I had to take the markings and the colors from those parents. So. You can see where I'm taking some of them from the, the bone armor parent here, the sort of, I think it's African wild dog pattern, uh, that, that spotted pattern with browns and whites and yellows. Because I thought that would make a really sort of interesting fiery pattern, particularly given the colors of some of the other parents. Made it look like a the, the bottom of the pony was on fire and added some of the oranges and yellows. One of the particular challenges of working with the restriction of having to use the markings and the colors from parents on these types of breedings is that they don't always mesh well. Um, in this case, they're actually pretty similar, so they're good. At, uh, they go together pretty well. But sometimes you get ones that are completely different. You kind of have to pick and choose the colors that'll work well together, and see what you can find. So, on a lot of these coloring videos, you'll see I go through several different versions of colors and trying to match things and make them look good together. And usually I'll try and sort of pick a theme to stick with. So like here where it's all the fiery colors and fiery markings and go through and kind of match all the pieces and the shading and the edits. So here you can see I'm coloring the line art, which is kind of the final stage of most pieces. And it really sort of softens up the lines on the pieces so that they don't look quite so cartoony, uh, which I don't mind for some, some of the styles I do, but for these pets I do like them to be a little bit less cartoony, if I can. Uh, so the line art, coloring the line art really helps helps the, that and also helps sort of blend it all into one piece. very last bit here 
is just sort of a tie-in, sort of again trying to make everything fit together. I do some sort of extra highlights and extra shading, more little speckles of light in order to tie the whole piece together. Uh, and sometimes brighten up the colors or make sure everything works together as a whole piece rather than just separate edits and pet base. So yeah. And then you can see on this one I actually copied some of the markings I had tried on the first one but didn't quite work. But I liked them together so I put them on this one to try and do a little more of a natural color, natural marked horse over here because this particular set was a set of two babies with the same edits and everything. Again, you can see they're trying out lots of different color combinations and see what works where. And, uh, even after sometimes people will ask for changes to the coloring or the line art. I don't usually record any last edits afterwards, but you'll probably see that uh, on the finished piece at the end. So here's the two finished pieces. Thank you for watching. And if you liked it, uh, like it, comment, subscribe, do all the things, or do nothing. I mean, you know, whatever you want. Yeah, not the best speller. <laughs>